Well, now you have a fair idea of what's happening locally and internationally. Let's go to the big story that we are uh, going to be talking about this evening. And earlier this week, that's actually on Tuesday, just yesterday, Ghana Revenue Authority uh, fully deployed its new customs clearing system. That is what they call the Unipass. The uh, Takarade port was hooked onto the system with some importers grappling with uh, challenges. Uh, my colleague, Josephine NGAJ, had further details on this and has filed this report. Let's take a look and then we'll come back in studio to discuss it further. In two statements to vendors and importers cited by TV3, the Acting Commissioner General, Amishadai Usuansa, instructed that Unipass from Tuesday, April 28, must go nationwide to be used as the only system for clearance at the country's ports. The system replaces the old one operated by West Blue Consulting and GCNet and justifying as an upgraded one. The Commissioner further stated that measures have been put in place and this deployment will bring custom end-to-end -end process. Adding that a third phase deployment of Tema and the Kutuka International Airports has commenced, old and existing declarations in the GCNet and West Blue will be processed but not fresh declarations. And that seemed to have brought some real difficulty to the Tema port. And we we'll want to go straight to Skype to speak to my colleague who's been monitoring this event right from the onset, Josephine Enchi Aj. And uh, we're going straight to Skype now. Josephine, good evening and thank you for joining us. Um, we know that you've been to Tema back and forth in the last few days. What exactly is the situation as we speak? Well, good evening, Martin. Uh, as you rightly said, uh Unipass has started nationwide, uh, both Tema Port and the Kotoka International Airport. And then Unipass, as we all know, is a new system that is going to be used by freight forwarders to clear your goods. But as it stands now, the directive was issued as at yesterday. But yesterday, unfortunately, a lot of the freight forwarders couldn't access the system so that they can enter new declarations and those who already had entered before the directive came and have paid your duties are also still struggling to clear their cargo mm. a very typical situation that we find ourselves was uh, the whole of yesterday the situation was the same a lot of them couldn't pay their duties for their importers and today it is almost the same situation mm. i can say that when i left the ports just around five to six o'clock uh, what i noticed was that new a few measures have been introduced which i can say can improve it a little bit mm. that is officials have introduced a way of a manual system so that in the meantime at least they'll be able to clear a few of the backlog because uh, when I visited the Terminal 3, the new port, that's where, that's the exit gate of the port. When you have done everything and your car, your cargo is on your articulator track and running out, okay? Mm. That is where you exit out. But when I went there around 5 to 6, you can see, Martin, a whole queue of articulator tracks mm. which are queuing, I mean, for them to be exited in a normal process with a GC net and the West Blue system, it's just a click of a button, mm. and then they 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 are checked, they are scanned, and then they are checked, and then the custom officer goes through the way bill, and then the the truck moves out, the importer steps out because mm. the person has paid all the duties. But today it was like a one on one basis mm. because it's a manual process now. For, for these tracks to come out. And you can see a whole, it, it was just a whole mess. But, 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 place, but just you know? I mean, I, this is quite a, a, an unfortunate development, but can you help us with the background? Why are we now on a new system, the Unipass system? And why did we decide to leave the old one, which seemed to have been working, and go to a new one, which is now giving us problems, for which reason government says, okay, you know what, let's go back to GCNet or call GCNet to come back to help us through this why have we changed the system well this is a, a very very interesting question martin that we are trying over two years now trying to get answers from uh, the ministry transport ministry and then the ghana revenue authority to give us answers mm. why now 
we need to change a, a system which has been operated by GCNet for 16 years. Wow. And then also West Blue, which have also come in to complement their work for close to five years. Why do we change the system? Hmm. Well, the answers they give us is that Unipass is going to give us a superior system. Hmm. It's an end-to-end -end process. When it is say an end-to-end -end process, it means that, well, the importers start the process from click of a button from A and move to Z, and then you are out. Hmm. But with the old system, when you are starting your clearance, the pre-arrival and the pass is, you do it through the GCNet process. Right. And that ends there. It's an online basis, but hmm. it's been divided into two. Okay, so mm. you go to the GCNet, and then the GCNet forwards you to Unipass, to forward you to, uh, forward you to West Blues, and then right. you end your process. So then we have two vendors on one stream of uh, system. Okay. But this is a situation, government says, okay, well, I want to uh, in increase revenue, tighten the loopholes, mm. and make sure that I get a superior system whereby there will be no need to handle two vendors. I right. want one vendor. Right, Martin. Right. Oh, okay. So uh, that's a good background you've given us. You also mentioned in your earlier submission that the Kotoka International Airport uh, has also been added, and they also uh, are now part. It's not just the Tema Port or the Takrade Port, but Kotoka International Airport as well. What can you tell us about uh, the airport? Right, Martin. So the the KIA was also uh, has also been affected. I checked there as well. I spoke to a few freight forwarders who work there, and what I gathered was that, well, cargo planes have arrived, right. and that's where they, they pick their cargoes and then go on. But it's still the same story. Okay. You know, pass is not working there. Hmm. So it was also the same. They can't access, they can't pay duty. So the system so, that is used at the port is the same one, of course, the airport, Tema airport, and then, you know, uh, seaport. But... Are you saying that the system used at the various ports is the same one being used at the airport? And because the airports, the seaports are having problems, the airport is also having a similar challenge? Yes, it's, it's the same system. So it runs through the whole nation because it has been deployed for the whole nation. Right. Takwadi uses it. Takwadi started 1st April, had challenges. Hmm grappled it through within three days and then they were able to solve it. Okay. Okay. So Tema is also going through the yes. The only uh, worry for freight forwarders and most of the business community is that, you know, Tema is a business hub. It is the, the basket, the revenue basket for, for the country. Okay. And then the Tema port handles close to 4,000 cargo within three days. So if you look at the volume of cargo that goes through the port, mm -hmm. what the freight forwarders were actually saying was that the best idea or the best move mm. was to pilot the project, pilot the system, and test how the viability of the system that before fully deploying it to such a, a very busy and critical uh, uh, point for the nation. Because Absolutely. now as it stands now, KIA, Kotoka International Airport, is the same situation. Tema is also in the same situation. Mm. We're just hoping because in the morning, mm. we had a circular from the... Um, okay, unfortunately, the line seemed to have... Uh, the Skype seemed to have frozen. Um, we'll try and reconnect with um, my colleague, Josephine um, uh, Mchieje, who's... Uh, been following the development of the Tema port um, and was helping us understand what the current situation is. We are told that some um, importers and even exporters are struggling, are struggling to, you know, clear their cargo from the port and has given reasons why, even mentioned that the uh, airport is also having similar challenges. We were told that was a, there was a meeting today between the Ghana Revenue Authority and government. Let's go back to um, Josephine to find out what outcome uh, was arrived at the uh, at that meeting. Josephine, uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, there was a little disruption there. Earlier today, we were told that there was a meeting between the Ghana Revenue Authority and government. What can you tell us uh, happened after that meeting? And GCNet, I beg your pardon. Okay, well, so the meeting was a so, actually, uh, so we don't actually have any information as to what transpired, what was discussed, and what is the outcome. But we know that God willing, Tomorrow, we will get a feedback on 
what is going to happen, how you're going to solve the situation so that importers or freight forwarders can have some ease and they can go about mm. your work uh, very well, Martin. Right. And uh, before I let you go, what you, you've, you've covered the ports and Tema in general for several years. What kind of impact would this problem have on Ghana's revenue collection and the whole port system in general? So we, we are looking at a situation whereby uh, when it comes to ports, well, ports is the engine of trade. Mm. And when it comes to revenue, government needs revenue and we get 60% of our revenue from there. Looking at the situation now with my few experience, when before this GCNet system came, there were challenges of recalcitrant freight forwarders conniving with custom officials to elude and declare and all of that. But now, if we are to go back to normal, go back to manual process, then we, we are shooting ourselves in the foot, mm. whereby we will go back to a situation where you can get an importer who under declare. Okay, okay, so when he under declares, it means that he doesn't give you the full details mm. or the cost of what he bought the cargo. Right. You don't have the system to check and correct. Right. And then you can find that importer to pay more or slap a penalty on the person. So right. when it happens that way, then it means that there's a short collection. When there's a short collection, obviously, mm. government will not get the due revenue that, that is seeking to have. Mm. All right. Thank you so much uh, for helping us uh, make sense of the entire problem uh, at the Tema port and other ports in the country. Justin and JJ, my colleague, helping us understand what's happening in uh, our subsequent bulletins, hopefully from tomorrow. We'll give you an update of what transpired at that meeting which took place between um, the, the told, uh, government and also uh, GCNet. And give you further details as and when they become available. Josephine and JJ, thank you very much for joining us. This is The Stands on TV3. We'll be back shortly. When we return, we'll be taking you to social media field and speak to two of my colleagues who have been working on our portals. I'm sure you've been interacting and engaging us on our various social media handles. In the period of COVID-19, when we 